maintain that under stationary, um, under stationary postage, telephone, internet. If you have to pay, if you haven't got fast, fast broadband, all the students are going to expect fast mm -hmm. broadband and you had to have it installed and you wouldn't have had it in if you haven't had students, yes, you could claim for that. But if you already have it because you've got teenage children, you can, can't really claim, you can claim the additional cost. But a lot of people will just do it on the number of people in the house. They might say, I have students five weeks of the year, I'm going to claim 550 seconds divided by the number of people in the house for those five weeks. So as long as you come up with a formula, then it's fine. Internet telephone, if you have to get a separate mobile phone to keep in touch with a student at all times, whatever, you can claim the whole of that if you never had one before and you didn't want one. If you felt you were just um, using one anyway, you might just want to claim an allowance for that. Things like train fares, obviously allowable, bus fares, uh, if you have to drive the students around. You, you can't really justify, if you're only working five weeks a year as a tutor, couldn't really justify the cost of a car. That would be a bit daft. But what you can do is do the fixed profit car scheme. That's much, much easier to do. 45p a mile. So up to 10,000 miles. And if you're driving them around the whole of Britain, you can only have 25p a mile once you've been around a few times. Because over 10,000 miles, the rate drops to 25p a mile. That's quite good because you don't, they don't really expect any, any records. You're supposed to keep records. But you can work it out. I, I, I claim fixed profit car scheme on my car at work. I don't have a company car because it's not tax advantageous to do so. And rather than me record that to this afternoon I've driven here and clocked the miles, someone said they needed a life, I need a life, I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do at the year end is I'm going to look to see I've done 10,000 miles this year. I know home to work is not allowable, so I'm going to disallow five times a week, 40 miles, whatever it is. And then all the other um, time is business because I don't use my car weekends. So you can you can come up with that sort of figure, and they they will check online to see people that haven't done any miles because they'll know from your own routine, and they can go online and they can check that in a year you've only done two thousand miles because you can't possibly claim four thousand miles, <laughs> and they will check silly things like that. So as long as it's reasonable, forty five p mile is quite generous. It's tax deductible, so yes, you can. Claim um, and that's called the fixed profit casting. So you wouldn't claim then for, sorry. Percentage of the mountains? Uh, so can, can you write any of the mountains cost you? No, that's instead. The 45p covers petrol, covers um, MOT, RAC, tyres, you know, blown up engines. It's good if you've got a reliable car. If you've got an old car that blows up, it's actually not very good at all because, you know, you could have a new engine, it could be 2,000 hangs, and yet you're only claiming 45p in a while. For a newer car, 45p a mile fixed profit car scheme is easier, much, much easier than claiming a proportion. Mm. You can claim a proportion. Some people just choose to sort of work out what a year's cost would be, um, but it, it does take a little bit longer because then you do need to keep receipts to justify those kinds of things. Mm. Um, these things are professional things like subscriptions. If you belong to, I don't know, so a language teacher weekly magazine or anything, those kinds of things you might choose to subscribe to business use. Um, membership fees if you have to belong to a language teachers association or a TFL association or something, anything like that you can claim. If you do pay an accountant, you can claim that. If you pay a solicitor to look at your contract or to evict your student, whatever, you can charge for that as well. Um, if, if NLE didn't pay you, you know, you might want to take them to court and then you get you can just claim legal fees. So. Um, I just want to know the accountancy fees. I hope my accountant's right. He said that well, I can claim the um, him helping me to sort of come up with my profit and loss, but the actual putting my stuff online, I can't claim for. Actually, did he used to work for the revenue? <laughs> <laughs> he sounds very mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, most people would just claim accountancy, okay. um, accountancy and taxation. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, he should get a life. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yes, um, so legal fees, subscriptions, those things. And then finally, the end of one is sundry. So anything that you've got, you think, well, it doesn't really fit into any of the other headings. Where should I put it? And sundry might be, oh, I don't know, it might be by the student a birthday present because the student has to be really on their 21st birthday or flowers or something, or some sort of a gift to cake or something like that. You might want to put that, you know, some, something, <laughs> something little. Things that don't really have a home anywhere else. So if there are any sundry expenses, you say, well, I don't know what to do with that. But again, that doesn't include the capital expenditure. So if, if a student comes in, breaks the desk, you have to buy a new desk, 
that's not really capital expenditure, that's just a replacement. So you would just claim repairs for that, and repairs and replacements. You, if it's like a hundred pound IKEA desk, you wouldn't bother to capitalise it and claim annual investment allowances to much work. You would just put it under repairs mm -hmm. on the self-assessment return. If it was, um, you know, a whole refit of the bedroom because the student had completely trashed it or something, hopefully they wouldn't, then you would want to claim capital expenditure on it. Or if you had a new computer or something that was, you know, two thousand pounds, anything major would go into capital expenditure. Anything just one-off expenses, just put to repairs. Yeah. Well, where's the boundary for that? Sort of? Uh, well, some, it depends if you've got this lady's accountant, so if you've got Leslie's accountant, you <laughs> might say £50, pounds, £100, pounds, so <laughs> some other accountants might go, oh, 200 quid or less. But, you know, if you work for KPMG and then one of the big companies, um, they're not going to, you know, they're, they're going to claim much bigger things, so it's like, oh, it's only £400,000 out, we'll just write that off. Whereas a smaller person might say, oh, we can only claim £50. Pounds. Uh, we say about £100. Pounds or below, you wouldn't want to capitalise that. Sometimes we say £200 or below, sometimes we say, well, actually, it's just a replacement. So someone spills coffee on that computer, it's not a new computer, it's a replacement for the existing one. So sometimes people will say £300, £400. It, there's, the revenue, there's nothing that says it's set in stone. It's also how it looks for accounts purposes. So if you're trying to impress your bank, we might say, if Kate's had all fantastic new office furniture, we might be saying, we don't want you to put that in repairs because it's going to affect your profit. We'll get a lot of bigger companies to put smaller things in capital because it makes them more profit, but they pay no more tax because you claim it anyway. But for small individual tutors running a, an at-home kind of business, I would say about 100 to 200 pounds would be about the limit of, unless it was a genuine repair. So if, um, um, what, could, what, what could you repair? Yeah, if they dropped your computer or something like that, or they not your television off and the house insurance won't pay, then yes, you can put that down as a replacement. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so some of the items are things that are just are kept, you know, just where you don't know where else but to I'm put them. It comes into a different category on the tax, though. For example, I used to be at the American Museum and I used to take out the one of my particular guests. Yes, yeah. But I suppose I'm playing that under charities rather than under an expense. Normally with charities, some of them, if there's a benefit, they don't like them being claimed under charitable, because they do try and get you to sign that. But I would claim that as an expense, yeah. not as a charitable donation, because you get some benefit. Yeah. So with charitable donations, it's not really supposed to be any benefit. So it's like when people belong to the RHS, you know, Royal Horticultural Society, yeah. Yeah. and they get free tickets for Chelsea or something, yeah. then it is kind of, you're buying tickets really, aren't you? So yeah. it's a bit of a different, I, I would say that wasn't a charitable donation. A donation would be water aid or gift, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. gift aid kind of payments. So, because I, I did it to that to the charity. Yes, yeah. Going on as well. well, the thing is, you don't get tax if you put it as a charitable expense, yeah. but then they are getting the tax relief on it, so they can't have their cake and eat it, so you can't have both. Yeah. So if, if you sign the thing to say you want it under gift aid, then it really needs to go on the charity charitable yeah. bit. But if you say, uh, you're not claiming gift aid, it's a business expense, you yeah. would just get tax relief on the payment that you make yeah, instead. No, totally. Yeah. Do yeah. I have to argue with my accountant because you won't let me claim my subscription to the National Trust even though they use it for the same I told you, it was miserable. He was, I guarantee he was trained by the revenue. revenue. Yes. You ask him, ask him. Were <laughs> <laughs> you trained by the revenue? <laughs> guarantee. Isn't that part of the point you just made to me there? If I... It's like taking that membership of the National Trust and then signed it as a charitable. Yes. That would mean that I couldn't then pay Yes, you can't have it. Yes. So it depends what you did. Yes. When you it depends what you did trust. when you joined. Yes. If you join the National Probably. Trust um, and you, you've joined to take another person, and you've joined to take another person, and specifically for your business, if you did it for your business because you needed to do one educational trip a week or whatever and you felt that that was a good place to go because you've got lots of houses you can go to then if you did it for the purposes of the business yeah, yeah you did it like because that. I need my husband to drive me because I don't drive yes. so he and I get in for nothing yeah. and my student yeah, it saves you having an extra yeah. expense. But then look at it another way. You've, yeah, yes, if, if you're not already claiming gift aid or that mm. uh, payment in the first place, because if you didn't do that, you'd have to have paid for you both or three. Mm, but I wouldn't really want to go to Tinsford about five times a year. Quite nice, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's it. So that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and sort of where I got on 
what's that? No, that's fine. You mentioned about DVD. Yeah. Which I thought was really interesting. We haven't got, it sounds as if I'm being flippant, and I'm not. Um, we haven't got, we've been we've looking at our house for three years, it's been the and we haven't got Sky TV. But I'm thinking if you buy a couple of DVDs of them, if you said if you said we don't, I mean the thing is sometimes they don't believe you. Some some people do. For example, they might buy a caravan and say, uh, it's like builders, oh, I've got a caravan because we have to stay on site. And we say, do you stay on site? And they say, no, but we might have to. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you have to kind of test. So it might be sufficient. What they say is, if they, if you, oh, I might have to watch the one we use Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> Personal element. If you if you if, if LLE said you have to have a gas safety certificate, mm. then you have to have a gas safety certificate because they're going to make sure they see it. Therefore, it is not allowed business. If they said to you you have to have Sky, our students expect Sky, then uh, then you would have to pay. You would have to have Sky. Mm. So therefore, the fact that you didn't have Sky, if Kate writes to everybody and says you have to have Sky, then, then you'd have to have Sky. <laughs> I'm thinking, um, I know it sounds yes, different, yeah. but I'm thinking in pragmatic terms. If you did say I never mm. ever watch it, and that's the difference is. If you say that, you could say, well, I wasn't going to get it, but you know, my students are, we've got to entertain them, because you can't just leave, can you just at night, mm -hmm. you, you do their 30 hours tuition, and you just say, right, well, I'm going downstairs to watch television, there's your room, enjoy yourself, or do you kind of like try to get them to watch things that you might think are educational or whatever? If you felt that you were doing it for business, um, you wouldn't be pushy and playing all of it the installation of Sky, because it is kind of, there is obviously some personal benefit, Absolutely. unless you could honestly say, I never, ever, ever watch television, never, hate television, but my students want to do. So if you said that, and, and it was true, they can't argue with that, because no. it's wholly and exclusively for business use. Does that make sense? So yeah. you, could, you could claim a proportion, I, you know, it would be, the DVDs would be a better example, because you can say, I've specifically bought James Bond because they're passionate about James Bond and they need, and I hate James Bond anyway. Because mm -hmm. you could actually say, I never watch Peppa Pig or I never watch aviation movies, but they're in the avi aviation industry. Then you could totally justify it. But when it's something that could be for family use and you just said you like watching rugby, it might be. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is, that I've, we've never had it in the hands, and I don't wish to do so. Yeah. You could, you could, you could try. I mean, the thing is, it's like you could try your luck. If you think it's a business expense and you think I'm only doing this for the student, then I will put it in and say you, you don't even have to justify it. You just put the cost in. Under subscription, you know, under um, these kinds of ex ad, 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 ad expenses and things like all research or deep. You can put it in wherever you want. And if they think it's okay, it's okay. And if they think it's, um, you know, if they don't like it, if they want more details, then you'd have to tell them that was Sky and that was £200 and this was that and that was £400. Then they may come back to you and say, why would you be claiming that? And then if you can justify it, they will just say, yeah, okay. If you sort of say, well, you know, I think I could get away with it. Some silly woman told us that this course would have, that we could claim it. I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you said um, the thing that they wanted to, if, you, if they felt was reasonable, then that would be absolutely fine. So they're not going to knock on your door after and say, do you know, you could have claimed for that sky. <laughs> so they're not, they're not going to prison if you, if you think something's for business use and you've done it, you know, with a reasonable sort of judgment of why you're paying for that expense, then, it, then it's an allowable expense. Okay. Yeah. So you can Thank try. You. Yeah. Um, then people want to know how much tax they pay. Obviously that's quite an awesome on this side. I can't believe that way. Um, how much tax do you pay on yourself? So how many people have done their own self-assessment ever? Yeah, it's quite straightforward. Yes. <laughs> it is quite straightforward. Really. If your in if your income's not very high, then <laughs> come to us. We'll give you a fixed fee. It's very. It's, it, but, you know, I have one one girl that she couldn't afford to pay off fees. We're not expensive, but she had made very little money. She didn't earn very much money. So I said. Look, don't worry, you can do your own. Like, you know, I'm not after your business. Do your own, have a go, and see how you get on. And she phoned me in tears on the 31st of January. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying all day to do my self assessment. She'd worked some skateboards. Yeah? So I said, oh. She said, Can you tell me how to use a revenue website? And I said, oh, 
30 years. I said, just send me the figures and I'll put it on the tax return.